Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. I'm Rob Meyer. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, the latest release in API Manager, which is 4.1. I'm here with Sanjeeva Malagoda, who's been here since the beginning. He runs engineering for uh, API Manager. And so what we're going to do is walk through what's new and then take your questions at the end. Now, if you look at the lower right-hand side, you're going to see a Q&A tab. I think you see a chat tab as well. Make sure you don't go there. Go to the Q&A uh, and start typing in your questions. We're going to try to answer some of them through throughout the webinar, but we're going to save some of the hardest ones at the end for Sanjeeva. So Sanjeeva, if you can move the slide. It has been, oh God, uh, over a decade since API Manager was first released. And if you, if you play it out, there are usually three types of challenges we hear in all the projects that, uh, that we see with APIs and any kind of digital business related project. Typically, a lot of the, the technologies are fragmented. Technologies, a lot of risk in releasing APIs around things like security. So generally, what we hear from the thousands of companies that use API Manager today is it's complete open source, meaning it's got everything you need now, especially since the 4.0 release with API management, service development capabilities, and integration all uh, together in the same product. It lets them deliver the APIs and the integrations faster. And of course, it's used by so many people, it's been proven uh, certainly throughout the last decade. Now, you might've thought that after 4.0, there weren't a lot of new things that could be added, but that, that really wasn't the case. And so this release 4.1 has added quite a number of new things. So many, in fact, that we probably won't get through all your questions, but Sanjeev is gonna try to explain, give you an overview of what some of the biggest new features are in the 4.1 release. So with that, Sanjeev, take it away. Okay. Thank you very much, Rob. Uh, so I'll start with the uh, agenda for today's session. So first I'll discuss about the API Manager 4.0.0 and what we were doing before that, what is the intention behind API Manager 4.0.0 because API Manager 4.0.0, uh, we have introduced quite large number of features and uh, they are like some architectural related changes and component oil changes as well. So I'll be discussing a bit on that as well. So then I'll uh, introduce API Manager 4.0.0, what is our release themes and release theme and basically what, what kind of features we lined up. So then I'll discuss about uh, 410 features in details. So then I'll quickly discuss about uh, update process and the user engagement, basically how you get security updates, how you get patches and that sort of information. So then uh, I'll quickly go through platform overview because uh, API Manager is not just one product. Uh, we have like a cloud offering uh, and they're like connected other products as well. So I'll be going through that as well. Then I'll come to question and answers. So first I'll start with uh, what we were doing before API Manager 400 and uh, how we, uh, what is the main reason behind uh, introducing API Manager 400. So if you are familiar with WC3 API Manager and the integration services before we did the API Manager 400 release. So uh, we had API management product. So with this API management product, we were doing API design, creation, reuse, governance aspect. And uh, all together, we were managing around like 8 trillion transactions a year. So globally, we were managing like more than 20,000 APIs. Uh, so this is based on the numbers that we know. Uh, so there are like a lot of open source users. And uh, this number is without counting that part. So this basically uh, count for subscription customers. And uh, if you are familiar with the product uh, at that era, basically, so at that time, we had API Publisher, Analytics, Designer, Gateway, Micro Gateway, and uh, they're like different components like that. So on the other hand, we had uh, Micro Integrator and Streaming Integrator components. So, uh, so they were basically catering all integration demands, uh, integration side as well as the streaming side. So, uh, so we had customers from uh, both these products. And uh, finally, we thought, uh, we thought of merging these two products together. 
because the pattern that you're observing is uh, most of our customers are using these two products together. So basically they, they use API management to manage uh, API angle and uh, for the backend integrations and the streaming integrations, they were using micro integrator and streaming integrator. So then we decided to merge these two products and uh, that is how API manager 400 introduced. So with that, uh, we merged these two products and um, then we did some uh, drastic changes to analytics as well. Because uh, so before API Manager 400, you will have to manage your own analytics. So you have to provision instances, you have to install servers, you have to do the updating part and everything. Uh, so the, this was quite challenging sometimes because uh, you will have to manage uh, this entire infrastructure, manage a large data volume. Uh, so due to that, uh, we decided to introduce cloud analytics. So then we introduced uh, API Manager cloud analytics. And that is completely free of charge for subscription customers. It means uh, if you have subscription, uh, you can simply uh, provision this cloud service and use it as you need. And then uh, we introduced some asynchronous API related uh, features as well. Then as you always do, we include, included some uh, security and stability uh, related enhancements as well. Yeah, so that's about uh, 400. So once we introduce 400, uh, our component architecture and the tooling distribution uh, somewhat changed. So basically now, if you look at the runtime components, we have API manager uh, control plane runtime, then uh, we, we have a micro integrator runtime, streaming integrator runtime, and then uh, we have analytics component and, uh, and as well as for your connect. And if I discuss about the tooling angle of the product, uh, we have API controller, and uh, integration studio, micro integrated tooling, and the streaming integrated tooling. So all these products uh, means runtimes and the tooling distributions are all under one product. That is WC2 API Manager. And with the, all these components, we cater all your API management and integration demands. And it can be uh, standard integration or streaming integration, both. Okay. So then I'll discuss about uh, for one release and what is the motivation behind introducing API Manager 410 and what are the release themes and high level features. So uh, after we did the API Manager 400 release, we immediately start uh, for one uh, release planning. So when we do release planning, uh, we mainly identified features uh, which are aligned to four different categories. So first one is uh, consume productivity. Uh, so the six, second one is uh, expand API support. Uh, next one is the policy management and the security support, then uh, third party integration. So if I discuss about the consumer productivity, basically, uh, if you look at WSO API Manager product, our consumers are mainly API developers, uh, API administrators, uh, API product managers, API consumers and end users. So mainly uh, they are like basically from the technical background mostly but uh, when it comes to end users, they are not that technical. So uh, giving these people's best, uh, best experience is uh, something we want to do. So uh, we have added uh, some features targeting that tangle, basically how you can like uh, minimize the time you spend on UI, how you can quickly create API. So we, we thought about uh, these concepts in detail and we introduced certain features targeting that tangle. So then we introduced uh, expanding API support uh, so WC API manager is not just limited to you know manage uh, REST APIs or the SOAP APIs. So we are supporting uh, GraphQL, uh, uh, WebSocket, event-driven architectures, and a lot of API uh, protocols and the standards. So with this release as well, uh, we have broadened our spectrum and we have introduced uh, new API support. So there are some features targeting on uh, that side as well. So then uh, policy management and security is one of the most important quality of service uh, when it comes to API management. So we, we introduce uh, some features targeting that angle as well. So then uh, uh, if I discuss about WSO2 API Manager, WSO2 Manager, API Manager is famous as one of the uh, uh, product which you can easily integrate with uh, so many uh, different uh, products and solutions. So, uh, so we have different connectors, uh, different integration points, which allows you to you know, connect with external gateways, external key management servers. For the authentication, you can plug and play different things. And uh, being open source, most of the people use these capabilities to integrate with different products and uh, come up with the, you know, uh, the connected solution uh, which address API management. 
So with this release also, we have uh, expanded our third-party integration support and added a few more integration with the uh, third-party systems as well. So I'll uh, go through with these features. So under consumer productivity, uh, we do have API-first uh, development support. So basically this allows you to import API to integration studio and uh, come up with the uh, design or the implementation of your API. So then uh, we have a soft to rest uh, transformation and uh, this will auto generate the pass to configuration and you can generate your own configuration. So I'll discuss about these, these features in detail. First, I'll go to the feature list. So then uh, uh, tenant admins used to, you know, uh, configure uh, service specific or the tenant specific configurations. So uh, to enhance that experience, we included uh, configure a UI based uh, configuration mechanism. And uh, sometimes API publisher component being used by the different level of people like API product managers, sometimes sysadmin people uh, use this portal to just to see how uh, these APIs are deployed or uh, what are the configurations for this one. So in such cases, uh, read only mode is useful. And also there are some uh, logging and tracing related enhancement as well because uh, as a API management system uses, sometimes we need to see what exactly happened with uh, these APIs. And sometimes you will have to enable logs per API basis, not just for the entire system. So targeting these points, uh, we have included some in, uh, visibility related improvements as well. And uh, if you are familiar with WC API manager, then probably uh, you, you have used WC to the support, which we introduced uh, last time. Uh, so at that time, we were supporting uh, two different sub protocols under that. And uh, with this release, we will completely support GraphQL. So then uh, under the policy management, uh, we have introduced custom reusable policies and uh, we introduce uh, operation level policies as well. So then uh, we enable uh, open policy agent integration. And uh, under the third party integration support, uh, so we, we enable uh, external API management capabilities. Basically with this, you can use external gateways and uh, we will do all the management part. And also expanding our event-driven architecture support, we decided to have a proper integration with uh, Solas broker. So Solas is a famous broker, uh, cloud-hosted broker service. And uh, with this release, we have first-class integration support with that. So basically, if you have a Solas account and then you have uh, event-driven architecture-based APIs there, you can simply manage these APIs with W3 API Manager. So that is the capability we are offering with this integration. So then uh, second use is to support for integration runtimes also there. Okay, so then uh, I will go through these features in detail. So uh, if you are familiar with uh, operation level policies or the, uh, the resource level thing, so when you have API, basically uh, in this API, you have different resources. So let's say you have uh, uh, some, some sort of like health related API. So then there can be some resources like uh, uh, the prescriptions or the patient information like that. So under these resources, you will have different HTTP verbs and uh, sub resource, and uh, you define query parameters and path parameters there. So the experience uh, we had so far is, uh, you can attach policies globally in API level and inside that policy, you can write uh, your own logic to handle uh, resource specific things. But with this particular API manager for one zero release, uh, what we did was we introduced uh, resource level policies. So basically you can create policies and attach policies to each and every resource. So which means if you have like a, a patient resource and uh, then you have prescription resource you can have two different policies for uh, these different resources and these resources you can manage separately and apply policies separately so with this uh, we will give more flexibility to api developers because you can have your own logic there and you can apply them in resource basis so this is one of the main new feature and uh, this is the sample ui so you will see uh, something similar to this one and then you can uh, view resource and you can apply uh, different policies. So then uh, I discuss about GraphQL subscription support bit, little bit. And uh, so API Manager 4.0.0 version uh, and the default, 
uh, we had basic graphql support so if you if you are familiar with the graphql concept then we have uh, queries mutations and the subscriptions so basically these three are the main uh, interaction points if you have a graphql api so our initial release uh, we decided to have graphql support only for the queries and mutations so subscription that is specifically designed for kind of uh, like uh, event event based architectures uh, so with this release we have completed the uh, subscription support as well so that means from now on we can say uh, we are completely support uh, almost all the graphql use cases so that includes queries mutations and the subscriptions and if i discuss about the quality of services for graphql apis uh, then we do have uh, graphql specific uh, quality of services so for example if i discuss about the queries then uh, queries have different things like that query complexity so when you define graphql policies uh, you can have this uh, query query and complexity uh, analysis kind of things and include that into uh, your policies because uh, we introduce this support uh, mainly uh, in the graphql world uh, you cannot like uh, simply a uh, restrict number of calls because with just one call you can read the entire data store and uh, pull whatever the information that uh, you need so basically you can dump entire thing with a single query so in order to prevent uh, uh, such misuse uh, you will need to have protocol specific policies so when it comes to graphql it's very important to have protocol specific policies so if it is a query then we should have a query limit and the complexity limit and that sort of thing so we do have Uh, support for all these uh, as well as the subscriptions in w3 api manager so then uh, i discuss about the solas broker integration so uh, basically if you have a, a solas uh, broker running uh, in your cloud or anywhere then you can simply uh, start creating api with the asynchronous api definition that you download from the solas site or the, that you design by yourself and then uh, configure wsu api manager to work with solas so then uh, wsu if you configure properly wsu api manager will keep uh, connection with the uh, solas broker and uh, create necessary api components here and do the management part so they will act as a, a broker and uh, main uh, policy enforcement part then uh, we will do the management part so if you have like a central api management portal then you can uh, use that to Uh, manage uh, solas uh, pub sub events as well so that is uh, about this feature so then uh, open policy agent or opa integration so uh, open policy agent is uh, somewhat famous uh, over last few years and uh, most uh, most of the api management and integration vendors are using this one uh, because it allows you to define your own policies uh, you can define the, uh, different policies and uh, evaluation criteria and uh, when we do the runtime call uh, we will call the policy engine and do the validation part so as you can see in this diagram we have users and devices so they basically uh, contact gateway when they need to access in uh, api so before we let them to invoke api we will do a call to open policy agent and then uh, we will get the response from open policy agent uh, policy engine runtime and then decide whether we need to uh, pass this request or block this request so this is, uh, in this case api gateway is kind of acting as a policy enforcement point uh, we do policy enforcement uh, on behalf of the gateway uh, so this integration uh, we introduced with the api manager 410 so this is again uh, we we got a lot of requests from the customers partners uh, because they need to uh, in, uh, integrate with the Uh, external policy engine for some sort of uh, uh, security or the authorization mechanisms that we don't allow simply within our product so uh, that's about this feature and uh, like i said earlier uh, when you go to policy list uh, you will see this uh, open policy agent uh, this uh, ui so you can simply click on that and uh, use that policy uh, with your api or api resource so then uh, Uh, next feature is interface support uh, so like i said early if we consider complete api manager product uh, then we do have uh, uh, api management runtime then we do have integration studio tooling 
So basically, uh, when you have API, if you want to implement a backend logic, or if you want to, want to have some sort of a switch case kind of a complex one, uh, you need to have multiple mediators to uh, design your integration flow. In such case, we always recommend you to use integration studio. So in this case, what you have done is uh, you can simply open your integration studio and you can discover available APIs in the system. So basically uh, you will see this sort of button here, uh, import from WSO API manager. So you can simply say, this is my API manager server. Uh, it's running on this particular URL and username and password. So now integration studio knows how to connect to that uh, API manager instance and pull the API contracts from that one. So basically it pulls out open API definitions and it, it make easy for you to uh, start with that one. So basically if you pull uh, some uh, open API definition related to your shopping cart API, then it will automatically come to Project Explorer like this. And uh, from that point onward, uh, you can simply uh, create or the implement API uh, based on that definition. So that means you will have all the resources, query parameters, path parameters, and everything. You can simply write whatever the logic you need. So basically, you will get uh, some sort of proxy implementation. So you can write your own logic inside that one and deploy uh, that into uh, integration runtime, then uh, use it from the API manager side. So this allows you to uh, design your API in the API manager side. And uh, later you can do the implementation in the integration studio side uh, without like uh, going too many uh, steps or too many uh, interruptions. So basically we have seen this pattern among some of our customers. So they basically uh, start with the API definition. So then they can uh, easily use the API mocking capabilities we have in WC2 API manager. So then uh, front end or the mobile application developers can rely on this particular contract and they can do their own development. So at the same time, we can pull this API definition into integration studio side, and we can do uh, the development part. So at one point, once the development, uh, the backend completed and the frontend completed, we can merge these two products. So up until that, these two teams can work independently without uh, depending on each other. So this is the, like, uh, uh, the real use of uh, this particular feature. So then uh, publishing third-party APIs, so it can be uh, Amazon Web Services or any other uh, developer portals or the gateways. So simply, if you have like uh, uh, two different uh, API management runtimes, probably you can have one particular API management runtime for the cloud, uh, cloud related deployments, uh, and uh, you can have on-premise one. And if you want to pull this uh, APIs to uh, your original store and list it as a third party API, so this feature will allow you to do that. So initial implementation uh, support AWS. So that means if you have AWS gateway, then uh, whatever the APIs you have in that uh, API gateway, uh, we can uh, display these APIs and their contracts, resources, and everything related to that particular API in WS API Manager side there as well. So you don't have to do any additional work. You don't have to like uh, recreate this API. We will we'll be able to automatically uh, discover these APIs and uh, create that particular entry in our system. So then if you need to have like a central catalog for all the APIs in your system, this particular feature will allow you to uh, do that. So then uh, SOAP is conversion uh, with Integration Studio. So if you are familiar with WC2 API Manager, uh, all the versions uh, released before 4.0.0. Uh, in WC2 API Manager itself, uh, we had this uh, capability converting uh, SOAP REST. But when it comes to SOAP to REST conversion, uh, there are like a lot of complexity. So basically you can have a set of XSDs uh, or you can have hierarchical vistas and uh, that sort of complicated use case, sometimes you will not be able to simply do the mapping part. So basically SOAP REST mapping, we can do automatically up to some extent, but when it comes to complex mapping, or the complex visual schemas and complex use cases, uh, you won't be able to simply do this mapping uh, just by using the product or any, any tool that uh, we have. So in such cases, what we usually do is uh, we pick uh, this definition and we take this as an integration product and do all the mappings there within the integration product itself. So this particular feature uh, allow you to do that. 
So it basically, uh, when you want to do this kind of a conversion, you can simply uh, start with the definition and then uh, that definition, uh, we, we help you to have a basic kind of a skeleton, how to do this transformation. So we basically identify the fields and we do the initial mapping and then let you to do the complex mapping. For example, if you want to merge two properties and add that to uh, one property when it comes to REST API, so of course you can do that as well. So uh, this capability uh, coming with uh, this particular feature, uh, you can go to Integration Studio, uh, you can pick uh, whatever the service definition that you are having, then you can uh, do the mapping by yourself and you can deploy that to runtime. So that's about uh, SOAP REST conversion. So uh, specialty about this feature, we had this up to some extent in API Manager, but this feature mainly focused on the complex mapping, complex soft rest mapping, uh, which you cannot simply automate or just by like, uh, uh, just do the mapping and uh, get that done. Okay, so then uh, next feature I'm going to discuss is the token exchange support. Uh, so if you are familiar with WC API Manager, then you know, uh, we have a third party key management integration. So that particular integration will allow you to uh, interaction with uh, external key managers. It can be uh, key clock, Okta, uh, Ping, or in any other vendor. So as of now, we have five different vendors supporting uh, uh, with this particular third party key manager. So if you are integrating with those uh, key managers, you don't have to write a single code. So this uh, key manager configuration is 100% UI driven. Uh, if you're having like uh, uh, all the configurations that we need, uh, token URL, uh, introspection URL, and all the other information. So you can do this 100% uh, from the UI. So this feature, we are going one more step ahead. And uh, if any 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 uh, third-party entity vendor support, uh, token exchange support, uh, with this particular feature, uh, we will allow you to do the token exchange as well. So basically, when you create application, you will see this sort of UI. So there you have like a uh, token uh, URL and everything. So basically, if you have already obtained token, you can pass that token and do the token exchange. So in that case, uh, we will underline, we will use or two based token exchange grant type. And by using grant type, we will obtain token and we will issue a token for you. So then you can use that token to uh, do all the subsequent API calls and whatever things that you need to do. So this is about uh, token exchange support. So next one, uh, create data service from uh, data source. So uh, so when it comes to integrations, you all know, uh, sometimes you will have to pull data from database. So you can have database and bunch of tables, and uh, sometimes you will have to convert this entire database to uh, web service. So this particular feature allow you to do that. Uh, so you can simply select whatever the database you are having, uh, database driver and uh, whatever the credentials. So then this particular feature will allow you to uh, see all the tables that you're having there. And then it allows you to design a RESTful API. So in this particular, so if you see this UI, so in this case, we have two, a few tables, teachers table, students table, persons and uh, courses, class and module table. So what it does is it will go through all these uh, tables and then implement REST API for uh, this particular database. So basically it will implement get put post delete. So these are based on the card operations. So get means you are getting whatever the entries they are uh, just by passing uh, uh, additional information that you need. And uh, post will allow you to update, put will create entries, delete will delete the entries. So likewise, this uh, database or the table to web service mapping part will be handled with this particular feature. And uh, we believe this will be really helpful if you are like, having already designed data source and you can simply use that to uh, convert that to web service. Uh, so this feature again available in the integration studio. Uh, so you can download integration studio and just try this part by connecting to a search database. Automate data mapping uh, is the powerful feature uh, we have with this uh, release item. So then uh, there are some uh, other features I, I, I I, I, I don't go into like uh, too detail about these features. So first one is the uh, read-only API publisher. Uh, with this particular one, uh, we allow uh, some, some users to access API publisher, but they can't really 
uh, modify APIs. They can just see whatever the API is available in the system, how resource organized, and some of the informations, uh, configurations, and things like that. But they can't uh, modify the API. So this is again uh, we got from uh, many customers and users, simply because due to accidental uh, changes, uh, sometimes it can lead to catastrophic situations. So due to that, uh, we introduced this feature. Then uh, monitoring API logs is another feature like that. So with that, uh, we allow people to enable uh, logging per API basis. So for example, if you are having a special API and that API is having some problems, so in such cases, uh, you can use this feature and enable logs separately and uh, see what happens with this particular API. So then uh, we do have uh, exposing integrations of services as a managed API. So if you remember API Manager 400 uh, release, we introduced something called service catalog. And this particular service catalog will maintain all the entries related to integration services that we deployed in our runtime. So with this one, what we do is, uh, uh, so last release, uh, we, we did this for the rest services. So basically, uh, if you have proxy services or the APIs that deployed in the integration studio, service catalog will pull that information and uh, have that in the uh, service catalog entries. An API manager can simply connect to that one and convert that API to uh, manage API within just one click. So with this time, uh, we will go beyond proxy services and APIs. We will do same for the rest services, SOAP services as well. So that means if you have deployed SOAP service in the integration uh, runtime, uh, now we will be able to pick that and convert that to API just with the one click. Uh, so this is about this feature. So these are like uh, main features uh, we have added. So in addition to that, we have like a countless, uh, uh, the security enhancement and the other minor changes and the other small features. So then I'll, I'll discuss about analytics angle a little bit. So uh, from API Manager 410, uh, we have analytics as a service. Uh, we actually introduced that with the API Manager 400, like I said in the beginning. Uh, so with that, almost all the users now can use uh, our cloud analytics. So that is free of charge for subscription customers. Uh, you don't have to do the management part, anything like that. So that is what you see in the left side. And uh, underlying, we are using some uh, Azure-related uh, cloud capabilities and the uh, courier runtime, uh, which is our cloud. So then, uh, 410 onward, we introduce uh, Elk-based support as well. So that means if you have uh, Elastic uh, and the Kibana dashboard and that sort of deployment within your organization, uh, we do have some extensions to uh, work with these things as well. So that means uh, we can simply do uh, integration with these products and uh, manage your integration uh, related integration and the API management related analytics demands within that particular platform. So uh, if I discuss a little bit about this solution, so we specifically uh, recommend this one uh, if you have some complications with using the cloud service. Our first choice will be always use the cloud analytics because that is free of charge and the security and all the aspects will take care of by us. And uh, uh, that's completely managed by us. But if you have some restrictions within your organization, which uh, like does not allow you to uh, take your data out for the cloud deployment or connect to cloud, in such cases, we recommend you to use the elk based solution. So elk based solution, uh, we have the bunch of, we have a bunch of like extensions and the customizations. You can simply install that to your existing elk deployment or else you can have a complete new elk deployment and do the analytics part there. Uh, yeah, so basically that's about this feature. Uh, and uh, we, we have almost all the features we have in the cloud environment to in this one as well. Uh, yeah. So next I will discuss a bit about uh, the WC2 updates, vulnerability and management and the community engagement. So uh, so this, uh, all these all, all WC2 releases will go to uh, rigorous uh, security check and the security review process. Uh, so within our software development lifecycle is itself, we have uh, uh, security enforcement. And, uh, but uh, some cases there can be uh, fixes uh, and the vulnerabilities that we found even after release of product. So in such cases, what we usually do is that we will issue a security advisories. 
And uh, if you go to this particular URL, you can download whatever the fixes uh, issue for these security vulnerabilities. Uh, so if this is like uh, uh, some sort of uh, critical security vulnerability, we will issue a uh, security advisories immediately. And if you are subscription customers, you can simply take the updates. Uh, you don't have to worry about like applying fixes manually. Uh, you can simply get the security update. Uh, but if you are not customer, and if you are open source user, then still you can go to security advisories and follow the mitigation steps. And uh, we usually include fixes and the uh, code changes that you need, uh, everything in the security advisory. So then uh, if I discuss about the support and updates process, uh, WSO2 subscription is mandatory to get uh, any sort of update from WSO2. So usually uh, we issue a free subscription, which is valid for 90 days. So once you have subscription, uh, you can simply pull uh, updates uh, from our update servers. So as you can see here, you can have a base product or the GA product, then you can install one update, then you have updated product. So likewise, you can keep updating uh, your servers. So these updates include uh, critical security updates as well as product and feature updates. So that means uh, all the security vulnerabilities and all the fixes you will get automatically. And on top of that, there will be small feature improvements, small feature additions, that sort of things also uh, you are getting within the uh, subscription period. So then uh, uh, I'll, I'll explain how, how we can interact uh, as a community, uh, then we have uh, user forum. So basically, if you have any questions related to API Manager, Integration Studio, or anything like that, uh, you can go to Stack Overflow and uh, uh, tag our product. So then there are like a uh, community around these projects. So they will help with you. And uh, we do have active Slack channel. Uh, we encourage all of you to join with this particular Slack channel. And uh, yeah, we, we do have different uh, sub channels, uh, which allows you to discuss about the technical related things and the production and roadmap related things and the different things like that. And also if you see any issues or any feature improvements, suggestions or anything like that, we always recommend you to go to uh, WSTO API Manager GitHub URL and there you can create uh, improvement or the feature request. So uh, all the entries that we created in the GitHub project uh, once in a while, we, we consider these things. Uh, we, when we have a product release planning, uh, we go through these features and identify some of the critical features from that uh, cell. So if you have any suggestions or any, any ideas related to the product, uh, please include uh, those things in the uh, JIT issues. And if you see any security issues or anything like that, always uh, you can report to uh, security at wc.com and then uh, we will get back to you as soon as possible. Okay. So then, uh, like I said earlier, WC API Manager is like a, just a one part and there are like a lot of other things as well. So uh, if you're interested about the cloud API management or the cloud security side, you can always refer for your studio. And then uh, we do have solution uh, verticals, uh, which is especially designed for the banking industry and the healthcare industry. And on top of that, we have strategic consulting and the professional services, uh, private cloud deployments and uh, training and certifications as well. So this is like a complete product and services stacks that we, that we are offering right now. Okay, so I think uh, now it's time for get some questions and answer them. All right, so uh, first question, what kind of bird is that? I think uh, cocoa bird. So they usually come from this area in this season. Yeah. All right. And, and yeah. can we add that as a uh, an alert tone and open source it uh, as part of the project? Now that's the next question. Okay. <laughs> one, yeah. Uh, so for uh, first question I see, and there's several, uh, is there an upgrade guide for how to upgrade from 3.x Yes. Yes, yes, Rob. So, so as soon as we completed release, we have started working on the migrations. So, as of now, if you go to uh, WSO2 uh, main documentation page, uh, 410 documentation page, so there's like an upgrade uh, link available. So, if you go there, then you will find uh, 
different upgrade path. So basically, if you're on tree two, what, what you should do, tree one, what you should do, and things like that. So at this stage, when we do this demo, uh, the webinar, uh, we do have completed tree two to four one upgrade and four to four one upgrade. So which means uh, these two migrations are completed and our development team is working on, uh, they are working on other, other migrations as well. So within next uh, few days or few weeks, uh, we will be done with all these versions. So that means uh, 26241, 3241, 31241, all the things will be completed within the next few weeks. But as of now, we do support 3.2241 migration. Uh, and if you have like a urgent migration requirement, uh, related to any of these versions, you can contact us and uh, get our support. But uh, within next few weeks, we will be available. There will be all the migration supports. Great. Um, next question. Uh, can I, um, interesting one, can I implement policies against SOAP web service calls like uh, XML validation and things like that? Yes, exactly. So XML uh, content validation policies are there. Uh, so basically you can define uh, entity expansion limited limit and uh, like uh, the uh, sub element count total element count so that sort of xml specific policies you can define there uh, so uh, in our uh, api mediation policies we do have content based uh, policies and uh, if you go to documentation there's like a special link for this sort of thing and there we discuss about xml policies so uh, uh, XML related various policies are there by default, uh, mm -hmm. but if you're not satisfied with them and if you want to do specific attributes and uh, do the XPath validations, uh, you will have to write a little bit, but other than that, most of the basic policies available out of the box. Okay, great, because it's, it's good for security as well. Um, can I expose materialized views or views as data services uh yeah so basically uh if you are starting with uh, the service uh, uh you can have uh, this sort of uh, materialized views as well that is simply yes uh, you will have to go through the documentation and there are steps uh, listed there okay great um can i merge analytics data with other third-party data and elk based analytics so I guess either can I inject more data into my WSO2 analytics or can I inject WSO2 data into my own ELK-based analytics setup? Uh, yes, of course you can do. So if you're using uh, Corio Cloud Analytics, then we do have API to pull that data. So basically we do all the summarization and the data storage part. And due to any reason, if you want to pull that data to inject on your own system, or if you want to export that to external billing system, so we do have ability to uh, call this API and uh, pull that data. So we do have support for that as well. And uh, in addition to whatever the standard properties, the standard uh, data we, we have, if you have any additional data, then we do have custom properties, uh, which, which allows you to you know, inject uh, by modifying the API gateway uh, extension. And uh, that information will also go into data storages and uh, then uh, do the summarization part as well. So simply, yes, uh, Cloud, uh, Korea Cloud Analytics having API. And also in the API gateway, you have a publisher extension capability that again, you can like uh, do anything basically. If you want to publish your own system, if you want to integrate with any other party, uh, you can easily use that. Okay, so the internal analytics data model is somewhat extensible. You can add a, other data in it through that. Yes, yes. Um, is there a guide for best practices for security? So um, just how to implement the architecture, how to lock things down? Yeah. So, uh, so uh, it's uh, security implementation part is not just limited to uh, API manager products. So we do have a general security guideline. So there we will instruct you how you can like uh, upgrade uh, key stores, certificates, uh, how you can do kind of uh, in-map sort of port scanning and close all the ports and the standard security practices. So, so basically how you can uh, add different, uh, like uh, adding complex uh, logics and uh, things like that, and how you can change the key stores, uh, certificates, and uh, what kind of uh, other best practices available in the API management space. 
so basically how you should like uh, do the design time uh, design time uh, api definition scanning uh, what kind of other security measurements you take so if you go to ws2 api manager uh, uh, security guideline document you will find all the standard security guideline related to our products so that they are we mainly discuss uh, in terms of the deployment angle and the product update angle but if you want to get some idea about uh, api specific security then you can go to ws2 api manager documentation then there we do have api security page and then we do have a security related pillar page as well so there we do have listed a bunch of api security related best practices so mm -hmm. we have all these uh, references in our documentation there. okay and i know we've captured a few things in the api security ebook but uh, it gives us all kinds of ideas for doing more webinars or more content. So hopefully more on that. We'll, we'll figure something out. Uh, looks like we've run out of time. Uh, we, we will try to answer all your questions here. There are some good ones. Uh, maybe we post them on the WSO2 Slack channel or figure out uh, uh, one or two places to post them, but we will get back to you. So I, I wanna thank Sanjeeva for coming on and uh, giving us all this detailed information of course, we're always going to try to answer your questions in other places like the Slack channels as well. So uh, thank you so much and looking forward to having you back here soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye, folks.